Hey YouTube, in this video we're going to be doing a PC build video upgrade for X670E. So this is going to be the ASRock X670E Steel Legend. I'm going to be pairing that up with the Ryzen 9 7950X3D. Uh, and then for the cooler, we are using the Deep Cool AK620. I know a lot of people on my live stream we kind of were joking about massive air coolers a few months ago. So I'm going to be trying this out to replace the Noctua NHD14, which it actually looks a lot like the old Noctua D14. This is what the D14 looks like. But Deepcool has a, a newer convex mounting plate in terms of how it sits on the IHS. So we'll see if that results in better temperatures. Uh, I'm also gonna be using, for the memory, we're gonna be using some Intel XMP Trident Z5 RGB. This is not the Z5 Neo, mainly because this is two sticks of 48 gig. So the total of this kit is 96 gigabyte total, so across two DIMMs. So that probably is the easiest way to get high speed memory, because this is rated for 6400 megahertz. We're testing 6400 megahertz with the Steel Legend, because Steel Legend, as of filming, is the only, ASRock is the only manufacturer that has made the new Agisa 1007B uh, publicly available on a lot of their AM5 motherboards. So we're gonna be testing the new high density RAM and see if I can run it at 6400 and even maybe higher, like 72, maybe even 8000, because these are the really good Hynix DIMMs. Um, and then if that works, we might actually test 192 gigabytes of RAM for a total of four sticks. So if you guys are interested in that, stay tuned. Let's get into the motherboard now. Just to kind of do a quick unboxing. Uh, so this is what's inside the inner box that the Steel Legend comes in. So I kind of think that this motherboard is a very good all-rounder. This one has pretty much everything you need. It has Gen 5, it has the full X16 Gen 5, four M.2 drive slots, four DIMM, and then it has the M5 socket. But what's really interesting about this motherboard, and I can see this happening on a lot of other vendors' motherboards, is it actually includes a nice anti-sag bracket. This is really nice, considering the price point. So that's a pretty good value add you have. A Wi-Fi antenna, some SATA ports, cables, some ASRock Velcro strips to tie down stuff, traditional uh, M.2 mounting uh, riser or spacer, and then in here you have the CPU installation, and they actually give you a manual. This is one thing that, at least at launch, a lot of AM5 motherboards did not include a manual. Same with the Intel LGA 1700 ones, um, but that's really nice. You get a Steel Legend postcard. That's really very random, um, but welcome. And then what's really nice about this manual, though, is not only do you get the layout of the board with explanations of what all the different pinouts are. So for example, there's a Thunderbolt header there. We're going to install a Thunderbolt card in a little bit. You get block diagram, which is really nice. You can see PCI Gen 3 X4, an M.2 card. You have Realtek 1 gig LAN, 2.5 gig LAN, so dual LAN. Then you have a PCI X1 Gen 3 Wi-Fi. You have the AMD Wi-Fi module from MediaTek. Uh, then you have two more M.2s, and then you've got four SATA ports. So really nice to see that the X4 expansion slot at the very bottom is wired directly to the CPU. So that's gonna be very, very good for the Thunderbolt expansion card or any sort of like 4K capture card uh, for that sort of thing. So that's what you get in the box. You also get a ASRock Steel Legend keycap. I guess you can change your S keycap or whichever one you want. And then we have some the various screws. One last thing to point about the unboxing that's a little bit odd is they did over secure these. They actually have zip tied these down. So you actually have to cut this motherboard free of the foam padding. All right, just take a quick look at the whole motherboard as a whole. The back IO is fairly dense. There's a lot of USB type A, which I'm a big fan of. So you've got dual LAN, you have a 2.5 Realtek, you have a one gig Realtek. You have a 20 gigabit USB, you have a 10 gigabit USB-A, then you have your optical, your microphone, and headphone jack, 
BIOS flashback button here. I think all AM5 motherboards have that. Um, you don't have a clear CMOS, but at this price point, I guess that's okay. There's probably one on the motherboard itself, or you can just short the pins, it's pretty easy. And then you have a display port, DMI, Wi-Fi 6E, that's the AMD Wi-Fi. You have an X16 PCIe slot. You have a Gen 5 PCIe or NVMe drive slot right there with the cooling. Um, and then you have a Gen 4 drive here. Interestingly enough, this does not have a heat sink. And then you have two more down here for a total of four NVMe drives on the motherboard. Then you have an X1 PCI Gen 3, and you have an X4. It is physically X16, but it's only electrically X4. This is perfect for the Thunderbolt card that we will be installing down here. And I like that it's at the very bottom because with graphics cards being as big and chunky as they are now, they can take up easily four slots. So having your X4 at the bottom is actually more and more ideal. You can see for the VRM, there are, there's proper cooling. There's a lot of like fin out there. It's really good. And then you have dual eight pin for the CPU. And then up here, lots of fan headers. There's one hidden there. It's a really nice motherboard. The one, at, the one thing that's missing that I would have liked to see, I would have made this motherboard probably one of the best ones for this generation, like the X670E overall, is if they included the seven segment postcode debug. Uh, a lot of motherboards you have to pay like 350 or more to get that now. And if you're on X670E, you have to go up to like a $500 motherboard, like an MSI Carbon, or the Azeroc Tai Chi, or the Gigabyte Master, if you want the postcode debug. Otherwise, you step down to the B650E, and those are like 350, so that's more than this. So this is kind of the, kind of one of the better, more budget line, although I know $300 is still a lot of money for a motherboard, but you're pretty much getting everything that you would need except that postcode debug. Well, let's start putting this thing together and then we're gonna test out the XMP RAM and see if we can do 6400 on the latest beta BIOS. All right, we will be installing the 7950X3D. So what I'll do is, we're gonna also use the deep cool air coolers. So what I recommend doing for those that are new to building PCs, I, I recommend installing the RAM first and then we'll install the CPU and the cooler. Or we might actually put it in the motherboard because we want to connect the dual 8 pins up at the top. SK Hynix Amdi, for those wondering. For This is probably one of the more higher end kits because this is a, this is a 96 gigabyte uh, kit. So we're going to install it like this. To install the RAM, if you're using two sticks, like what we're going to be doing at first here, you want to use the second one from the motherboard or from the CPU. So the first one, two, three, four, you want two and four. Then if you're gonna run all four sticks, then you would install the other two. So this has to do with the trace wires to the CPU. So those click in like that, so that the RAM is in, uh, and then we're gonna do the CPU. To install the deep cool, I've never done this before, so, I'm going to assume they give you a screwdriver that looks exactly like the one that Noctua includes in theirs. Um, but what you need to do first for AMD is you got to remove the default bracket for the CPU cooler. Um, that normally goes, this is normally used with, some AIO liquid coolers use this. Most typically used with like the Wraith Prism for example. Um, but we're using a higher-end CPU that needs something better than the Wraith a Prism to uh, stay cool. So we're going to remove the, these. And for AMD, it's actually pretty easy because you keep the back plate. So to, to install the CPU, first of all, you have to have the CPU out of its box. So take the Ryzen 9 7950X. Gonna go in there, you leave this cover on. You do not remove the cover because it comes off naturally when you secure the CPU. So you basically take the CPU out of the plastic clamshell that it comes in, and then you're gonna lift up this latch. It comes it goes down, and the socket cover goes up. Alright? And then it goes in like so. There's a little latch there that kind of sticks in there and there's one there, so you know that it's lined up. So it should be lined up 
symmetrical that's in you do not want to damage any of the pins on the motherboard because that's that can cause it to fail so you just put that over and then watch you do not need to touch this you just bring this latch down and it literally like flings it off and that's it that's how you install a AM5 CPU, an AM5 socket CPU like a Zen 4 CPU for instance. So now for the cooler, what we want to do is we want to get these. So we're going to be using these four and they're going to go down on the existing back plate that comes with the motherboard. What we want to do also is we want to install the M.2 drive before we go any further. So I have a Gen 5 drive that those of you who have been watching my channel for a while know that I have the TD510. What we are doing is we are migrating from a Gigabyte uh, X670 Aorus Elite over to the Steel Legend because Steel Legend is, has a better BIOS. So we'll be able to test more density RAM and higher speed RAM on this board. So this is the cooler that comes with. This looks like it is sufficient, however, the TD510 has chips on the back side, and I kind of think that if we look at the TD510, I think the TD510 has a better amount of cooling. So we're gonna take the drive, install the drive. We secure it to the motherboard. For the actual top of it, D is going to be AM4 and AM5. And then you're going to use these four to secure those. All right, hand tightening should be enough. I'm just going to use their tool here to make sure. You don't need to over tighten this because it will bottom out. All right, and then for the cooler, we're going to put that in, but we're, first we're going to put this motherboard in the case so that it's easier to get the power cables, the EPS cables in. Okay, right, once you have it in the case, you're going to want to tie it down or you want to fasten it down using the nine, it's ATX. So you're going to install nine screws to secure it to the motherboard. Okay, once you have the RAM in, the motherboard's mounted, all the SATA cables, everything's connected. So we're gonna want to mount the cooler. So it does, remember to remove this before installing it. So let's put the thermal paste on, then we'll install that cooler. So that it does come with Deepcool's own thermal paste. We're gonna use this. That's all you need. So for those that are wondering, there's the rice grain. That's all you need. So remove this. Oh, we'll use we'll use their included screwdriver. All right, that locks into place. And then you do the same thing for the other one. Okay, so the cooler is secured now to the motherboard. Now we just have to plug the fans in. All right, once you have everything in and connected up, graphics card power cables are in, the Thunderbolt card is installed with its header cable and the USB cable, and then USB 3 cable for the front panel, all that stuff's plugged in. We're now ready to boot into Windows. Okay, so I've been testing the 96 gigabytes at 6400 for a while now on the ASRock X670E Steel Legend on the latest Agisa 1007B. And the, I'm actually quite impressed. So it is running very stable. I tested for Spoken just now, which I've talked about. That game is an excellent tool for testing memory stability because it uses direct storage so it cycles a lot of cache through the CPU because it is using direct storage 1.0 so 
So it uses a CPU to do a lot of that. So you can see here the CPU is the 7950X3D, 96 gigabytes in gear 2 with 3200 DRAM frequencies, so 6400 megahertz total. So overall I am quite impressed. I am probably going to try to test 192 gigabytes because I can do that and we will see how well it does but so far I am impressed with this new BIOS the memory trained to 32 38 38 102 that's actually better than the 32 39 39 slightly and the nice thing about this RAM is it is Hynix and it only uses 1.35 volts to do that and I only needed a SOC voltage of around 1.2. Um, that's pretty good. We will see what happens when we try to up the density because I think that's going to be the most challenging thing when you try to run four DIMMs. But two DIMMs, 96 gigabytes of memory is pretty good overall. All right, so the key takeaways for those wondering with the new Agisa 1007B, you can run memory in excess of 6,000 pretty reliably now. So I tested 96 gigabytes with the Steel Legend. This was the XMP memory. This is Trident Z5. So this isn't even on the QVL list and it worked totally fine out of the box. So the memory, it, it takes a long time to train. That's like the only caveat that I can say is when you first put this system together, and I think this is going to be true for all the other motherboards, not just ASRock's motherboards. DDR5 takes a long time to train. So in order to run like, for example, 6400 or faster, you're gonna have to let it sit there for a while, you know, like a good three, four minutes, even longer. And that's at 96. If you have less memory, like 32 gigabytes, for example, on two sticks, that's gonna train pretty quick. 64 gigabytes, so two 32s. That takes quite a bit longer to train, but 96 across two 48 gig DIMMs, especially on RAM that's not QVL certified like this, which is actually meant to go on like an Intel motherboard, for example, because I had to load the XMP profile. That takes a long time to train, but the good news is that once it trains, every subsequent boot cycle from a cold start is fast. So it seems like memory context restore has been updated to work properly now. Sleep works as well. So when you put the computer to sleep, oftentimes if you're running RAM faster than 5600, sometimes you would have to retrain on a reboot. So that seems to have been resolved now with this Agisa 1007 patch B. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when other motherboard brands like Gigabyte, Asus, and MSI get their updates publicly available. Because as of right now, Azrock's the only game in town if you want to run really fast memory. Hopefully, 4 DIMMs works good too, because I do kind of want to max it out with 192 gigabytes of Hynix at 6400 would be ideal um, but if 6400 is not going to work i can sell for like 5600 because if i can get 5600 to run stable at 192 or even 190 or even 128 that would be amazing so anyway i hope you guys found this video useful so that's a look at x670e and the new bios it works really really good massive massive improvements um, to the BIOS with this update. So totally recommend as soon as you guys, if you have an ASRock motherboard, definitely check out this BIOS. It is really, really good. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks.